Photoshop really consists of a family of products. There is Photoshop, which you're learning now, Photoshop Lightroom, targeted at high-end photography, but hobbyist and amateur photographers who have serious equipment love it and live for it too, and Photoshop Elements. So let's take a look at the two other products that are not part of this series, but are part of the Photoshop family. If I minimize and I were to launch Photoshop Elements, you have the ability to organize and view your photos or jump into the Photoshop Elements photo editor. Elements is targeted toward the home user or home office user, people who may be in charge of archival of family photos or correcting family photos and uploading them to Facebook, for example. So if I look at the interface for Photoshop Elements, it's quite simple in the quick version. There are really three different parts to the interface. I love the 3D and colorful icons. They have tools like Photoshop has, red eye removal tool. I use the dodge tool in Photoshop to whiten teeth. They actually have a toothbrush icon to whiten teeth and type tools and some healing tools. You can go to a guided interface which has tasks for you, things that you might want to do, or an expert interface which has a lot more tools that are mirrors of Photoshop tools. But this is a less expensive version and of course can't do everything that Photoshop can do. If I look at Photoshop Lightroom, most people refer to the products as Elements, Lightroom, or Photoshop. So with Photoshop Lightroom and Photoshop Elements, they just drop the word Photoshop because it's known as Lightroom, for example. Lightroom has a database at its core, so dealing with mass amounts of images is far more efficient. It indexes, it searches, it catalogs. One of the complaints when people first start using Adobe Bridge, if they build up a library of thousands and thousands of images, just building an initial preview can be slow. Searching can be slow. But in Lightroom, because of its database, everything is instant. And it was designed with photography in mind from the ground up. It uses a catalog to track my imports. I've brought in some iPhone images, the Monterey Aquarium, and some shots from New Orleans. So I'm looking at my library and the New Orleans series. And it has a more photo table layout where I could select one image. But there's a lot of different modules. In fact, I love the map module. I was just looking at a series from my iPhone, and it showed me a map of where I was in Carmel by the sea. There's integrated features for building books, for doing slideshows, for printing online printing of coffee table books or high quality books for your clients. So any serious photographer is going to lean towards Photoshop Lightroom for importing, correcting, organizing, and keeping on top of their massive image library. But anyone using Lightroom will also have need for Photoshop because there are a lot of things that you could do in Photoshop that you can't do in Lightroom. Lightroom doesn't really add layers. Lightroom doesn't do filters. Very cool things like adding a Gaussian blur to create artificial depth of field, which means blurring up the background so that the foreground subject or object stands out more in the photograph or is more compelling in the photograph. So Photoshop is geared towards photographers. Photographers that are high-end photographers or professional photographers will typically own both Photoshop Lightroom and Photoshop. Print designers have lived for Photoshop since the beginning. Web designers and app designers actually do mobile mock-ups or web mock-ups. Now that Photoshop has character and paragraph styles, and now that you can copy those character and paragraph styles to cascading style sheet documents, the text features really enable web mobile and interactive designers across media designers to develop their content and not have to redo the work from Photoshop over to the web or over to their application. In Photoshop CC or Creative Cloud, they combined two versions of Photoshop. In the past, there was standard or extended. And extended included medical imaging, 3D features, and a few versions ago, you could only do video editing if you had extended. 
Now there's only one version of Photoshop, so if you want to edit videos, you can do it directly in Photoshop. I find that far easier than learning the very high-end Adobe Premiere or After Effects, the core video editing applications. Premiere would edit your videos, After Effects would do green screening, which might mean take a moving person who's standing in front of a screen that's green and drop in a new background. So ideal for television and movies. That's After Effects and Premiere, and I found them quite intimidating at first, but to do my video editing in Photoshop, a program I've been using for years and years for static images, is just wonderful. If you're curious, I love history. I'm a history buff. I love fact-based fiction or historical fiction. But Photoshop's history is quite interesting, so I put two of my favorite links that give you a little bit of the history of how Photoshop was born. And I'll bring up one of those pages right now. So the creators were Thomas Knoll and John Knoll. And really, Thomas Knoll was the catalyst starting Photoshop as a diversion for working on his doctorate. And he developed a way to display grayscale images on a black and white or bitmap monitor. If I scroll down, I love in this article, because I had this box, the 1.0 version of Adobe Photoshop the three and a half inch floppy disks, which I barely remember anymore, and the original splash screen, or the 1.0 version of Photoshop. So as I return to Photoshop, the application, <laughs> which we are learning, here is your summary of the Photoshop family. Photoshop, Photoshop Lightroom for professional or hobbyist photographers who build up mass amounts of images, and Photoshop Elements for home or home office or family memory keepers, or video enthusiasts who might find all of the features of Photoshop a little bit overwhelming. It's a much simpler, guided interface and less expensive.